Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the IRS financial statement, the 433F. Um, I'm a former IRS agent. I worked there for 10 years. I've been in private practice for uh, 40 years. I have been doing this 50 years. I have a whole team of former IRS agents. I'm a national figure in IRS resolution. I've been in the national news many, many times. You can see my whole team and my news interviews at 777irs.com. As a former IRS agent, I like to teach you things, and just to let you know, there's three different types of IRS financial statements. The 433 OIC is used for the offer and compromise. The 433A is used by the revenue officer, which I used to be in the local office. The 433F is used the most. It's a two-page form. Meh, firm, 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 form is used at the service center. Really easy form to fill out. When you call that 1-800 number at uh, IRS and you want to get something straight and they say, well, we need to take a financial statement, this is the form they're going to use. So if you're going to call IRS to work out a payment plan or maybe you put in hardship or uncollectible, you need to be familiar with that form. So when you look at the form, there's just basic information on the first page. I just want to know a little about you. Um, also, they're gathering levy sources by wanting to know where you bank at in case you default on a payment. IRS is really looking at two things. They want to know what your assets are and then they want to know what your income is because they want to make sure you're living uh, within your means. IRS has a whole formula to determine if you're living within your need, means and it's called the National Standards Program. You can look it up online, look at my YouTubes, I explain what the National Standards Program is. It basically says it, this is how much you can live on if you live in a particular county. IRS fine tooths that so uh, I, this is the only thing that you're going if, if you if you spend over that money that they wanted basically when you call IRS they want an exit strategy what are you going to do are you going to pay it off you need a payment agreement you can't pay it are you going to put in hardship generally when you call the 1-800 number the two results that you're going to have is you're either going to be put into currently non-collectible which means your case will be there for a couple years then it'll kick out at some time to look at and review or they're going to enter you into payment agreement because you have the ability to pay the tax according to them. Anyway, uh, make sure all your tax returns are filed. If you need help, you're welcome to call me. You speak to me directly. I only work larger cases. Don't be afraid to call IRS if you don't have much in a way of income or if you don't have a lot of assets. IRS really isn't going to do much. But if you have a lot more money, you shouldn't be doing this yourself. There's a couple tricks and traps I'm not going to talk about, but, but there. Just make sure you look at the 433A, 433F before you give it to them. Thank you for the subscription. I appreciate it.